is the Lord on your side. Amen. We have no fear. The Lord is our shepherd. We want for nothing. Good morning, church. We have Canvas sister, sister Anne. Good to have you here today. Um, let me look around here. <laughs> Michelle's here and her friend. Okay, Jerry's daughter. And most of the rest of us are the rest of us. Okay. All right. It's so good to have everybody. Today is a, a special day in our church. We're going to be recognizing our graduates. Now we're going to re recognize some from last year as well as this year because we were closed last year. Okay. So we're going to be doing that tomorrow. Anybody who's interested in working and is already signed up to help work with the Super Saturday, Super Summer Saturdays, you know, our Saturday pro outreach program, we'll have a meeting tomorrow at 1030. And this is just to check so that make sure that the leaders, that you have all the people you need, that you have all the supplies you need or find out what you need. And for those of you who have not come to the previous meeting, if you want to come and find out what's going on, please do that. We are having a prayer table. So if that is one thing that we added to, because we're outside, we added that to the curriculum. Um, and this is beginning really, really quick. On the 5th, we're going to be out front distributing flyers and making pinwheels with the children. On the 9th, that's a Wednesday, the 5th is a Saturday, on the 9th, which is Wednesday, at 5 o'clock, right before prayer meeting, we'll be going with Pastor Jorge and Evelyn to hand out flyers in the neighborhood. On the 12th is our first Super Saturday. We want everybody to come. If you're not even taking part, if you will come, bring a lawn chair and sit around, see what's going on, pray for us as it's going on. We want this outside filled. Okay, and we do have a tub here and a tub back there if you want to donate any, any treats, candy or anything, or if you want to donate school supplies for our August emphasis. Okay. On June 19th, we're having a work day. How many of you all are looking at your weekly emails that come out? Okay, if you're not looking at them, if you're not getting them, you should be getting them. You might wanna check your spam bucket because it's at, has a whole lot of information in it. If you aren't getting it, send an email to pastorpatty at mail.com and I'll make sure that you are on that list. But on the 19th, we're going to have a training for our new audio-visual. The reason I stopped about the mail, it was in the mail list. The equipment is here. It's going to be installed on the 18th. We're going to train from 9 to 12 on that Saturday. If you have even the slightest thought that you might maybe want to be involved in this ministry, please come for the training. We need a lot of people to be trained that can step up there in case somebody has to be out. Okay? And we look forward to our new system. Yes. Okay. Um, May 30th. Next Sunday is very, very special. We have three opportunities for worship and fellowship. Sunday school at 9.45, church at 10.45, and I get to preach. And then at 6 a.m., <laughs> you ever heard anybody say, I get to preach? But I, I hope I don't let you down. And then at 6 o'clock, we're having an ice cream social. The church will provide the ice cream. If y'all want anything with your ice cream, like brownies, chocolate chip cookies, whatever you like with your ice cream, bring it, okay? But the church will be providing the ice cream and this, it'll be set up inside and outside. So don't be afraid to come because we can spread out real well. Okay, and the NAS guys, Tuesday be for Brady, 11.45, NAS gals, Olive Garden, 12 o'clock. 
We've been having some nice groups. We have wonderful fellowship. Come on, come on out. And let's turn our hearts and our minds now to worship as Daryl comes to lead us.
Good morning again. It is time to celebrate our graduates. Our graduates did not make it on their own. Our graduates had help from home, and they had help from God, and they're going to put their trust in God for where they're going next. I'd like to call Anna, and Anna, would you bring your family with you as your supporters? I would like to call April, and April, would you bring your family with you? And Chrissy? We have two more. Alyssa didn't make it in, but Alyssa graduated last year. That's Millard's granddaughter. And would Judy Dean Randall, would y'all come and, and stand up here in Emily's place, please? Because we want the families also to receive the blessing and the thanks for their accomplishment. It is a family that raises are people who stick to it and graduate. Ms. April Waldron received her master's degree in religion with a focus on biblical and theological studies. Masters, all right. Ms. Christine received her associate's degree. Yeah. Uh, can I talk to be a teacher or a teacher's assistant? All right. Good. Here we have Ms. Judy. Emily Ownby, Randall's big sister, only I think she's not bigger. She is now shorter than you. <laughs> this is Emily's support team. And Ms. Judy, we're going to ask you to take that to Emily. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Save the best. No, <laughs> everybody's the best. But Miss Anna, born and raised in this church, she has been, first time I came, she was running around in Pampers. <laughs> I did not see her before she was running around, but I did see her running around in Pampers. So this is someone that many of you all have invested in over the years. Oh, for 20 years. <laughs> Almost 20 Almost, years. yeah. So we've watched her grow, and, and Billy and Sharon have been their support, her support, keeping her in touch with us. Now, if y'all would turn and, and face the rail, Pastor Mike wants to come and pray over you. I believe Anna wants to speak a few words. All right. Go ahead. Anna, speak a few words and tell us what you're doing. No, I actually took pictures of it. <laughs> I actually, it was funny because I was sitting in my bedroom and I was actually scrolling through TikTok when I actually came up with this speech. Oh, wow. Um, where do I begin? So many memories, so little time. As days turn into nights, nights turn into months, and months turn into years, I find myself standing only a week away from graduating. Just yesterday, it felt like I was a freshman. Then, in a blink of an eye, I was a senior. Wow, where did the time go? No more running around in the yard playing with friends. No more playing with dolls. Instead, I find myself sitting inside watching TikToks for hours upon hours. Then, I seen a video, and the words spoke to me more than normal, because normal videos wouldn't. But this one caught my eye. It, the words read, oh, I know the world's not always pretty, and there are days that seem to last for way too long. Oh, I know the world can get real ugly, and there are times you feel too hopeless to go on. But hey there, don't you know, just look deep inside, and there you go. Hanging in your heart, I'm always there. And can't you see... Uh. <laughs> oh my god, I don't like standing up here. <laughs> But anyways, the words continue to go on, and it, this, they spoke to me, okay? And it gave me hope that hearing those words that God is always with us, even in the darkest time, when we feel too hopeless to go on. And at the end of it, it says, let me be your light. And as we all know, God is our light. He is our savior. He is the one that died for us on this cross that we can live to this day. And I am so thankful to be raised and to be a part of this church family. So thank you for raising me.
I remember too the first time that you got up there and you were <laughs> We're having a camera moment here for a quick. <laughs> All right. A Kodak moment. Will we even say that anymore? Okay, thank you. Can. Well, on behalf of your church family, we are so proud of you and we will continue to pray for you and um, and um, wherever you go in life, always remember that this is your home. Yeah. And you can always come back home. And um, we're going to love you and support you every step of your journey. So once again, thank you for uh, all that you have done to come to this moment. And uh, we pray God's richest blessings on each of you and thank God for you. Heavenly Father, we count it a privilege today to pray for these. These are your children, Lord. They were created in yep. your image. And we pray for them right now that your image would shine in them and through them as they continue on this journey of life. Thank you for the accomplishments that they have made and the work that they have, uh, the hard work that they have put in to come to this moment in time. And Lord, I pray that you would use each one, each one, Lord, and may you be glorified in their lives, in their witness for you, in their service for you, in the places of employment or further studies. We pray that your hand would guide them and bless them. Thank you for their families. And Lord, we pray and give thanks for moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas and everybody else that have had an impact on these. And here as a family of God, the church family, we thank you that we have had a part in their lives. And so, Lord, may your grace and peace and blessings be upon these, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So we become givers and servers because that's what he was. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to be the one who serves others. And many of you I know do that. You do that here in the church, in ministries of the church. You do it in the community. You do it with your neighbors. When you see a need, you do it with friends and family. You serve because we can be like him. And so giving tithes and offerings becomes easy when we give ourselves first to Him and then to others. Paul writes to the Colossians these important words to us. He says, My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom knowledge. Let's give God thanks for what we were able to share in ministry with others. Lord, we thank you for all that you've given to us and that you give us the capacity to become more and more like you and to give ourselves first to you and then to one another the world around us, where we see need, where we see the opportunity, you've helped so many of our people to step in and meet needs 
And we thank you that we can do that one-on-one -on -one to people that we come in contact with, and we can do it as we share our tithes and offerings and support the ministry of your church in so many different ways. And so we give you thanks for what we are able to give and contribute in this moment of worship. Let's continue to worship as we sing together. Hiding in the in life's darkest hour there is help and hope in you O oh lord and we come singing these words and believing these words with all of our heart we're glad on this pentecost sunday that the comforter has come the holy spirit and you are here lord your presence is with us right now and we give you all praise honor and glory would you O oh lord come and fill your people afresh and anew with the Holy Spirit this day. That's the deep desire and prayer of our hearts as we pray for one another and pray for the family of God. And we know, Lord, that you know our needs today. 
And so we put our faith and trust in you, O oh Lord. And we, um, we say increase our faith, Lord, when we doubt and when we fear, when we, we have the unknown and the unanswered in our lives that uh, sometimes uh, cause us to worry and to fear and to, to be overwhelmed with all that's going on in our world and in our lives. Would you come and whisper your sweet words of peace? And you said in this world we would have tribulation, but be of good cheer. You said, I have overcome the world. And so, Lord, you are here today with your presence and your power and your blessing to, to uh, speak to us. And we want to be good listeners today. We want to hear your words. We want to we be obedient to all that you say to us this day. I pray today that uh, people will find you today and uh, experience your grace and your power and your blessings of salvation and sanctification and Lord that we would uh, be drawn closer to you and closer to one another as the body of Christ and so Lord we're glad that we can come before your throne it is a throne of grace that we may have received mercy and help in the time of our need and so Lord we we lay our hands on the prayer list today, and you know each and every name on this list. You know each and every situation. And so, Lord, we put our faith and trust in you, O oh Lord, and ask that you would go and minister to each and every one according to their need. And we know we have three of our members here on this list that are in the hospital, our brother Ken and and uh, Joanne and Donna, would you be with these especially today? And Lord, on this list are those who are confined to home and they may be listening via the live stream or uh, through the DVD tomorrow and early part of this week. Lord, would you minister to them? And Lord, we pray for them and we pray for those that are awaiting the answers to tests that are coming up and doctor's appointments and Lord, you know, and so we just look to you, O oh God, for all things and know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And so, Lord, we, we look to you and we put everything into your hands and care. And we know, Lord, that you give us a grace for each and every moment, each and every situation. So, Lord, you will never run out of your supply of grace. Your grace is sufficient today. And so may your people experience and receive the gift of your grace today according to their need. And Lord, thank you that we can participate in your work here in Avon Park and all around the world today. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we're praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come upon us in these days so that we can go forth and speak your word boldly and do the work that you've called us to and gifted us for. But we need your help, O oh Lord. We cannot do it in our own strength and power. We don't have enough of anything, Lord, to make it happen on our own. But we have everything that we need in you, O oh Lord. And so we look to you with our faith and our trust. And so we pray for our family and friends and names on this list, those that are serving you, those that need your touch today, those that need encouragement today. Would you encourage their hearts, we pray, as only you can. And Lord, would you use us as ministers of encouragement as we allow you to work in and through us with our words and our actions that'll, that'll draw people to you, people to know you and experience you. And they see you living in us and we are a witness to them an example of them, of one who follows Jesus. So thank you for this service today. <coughs> May Christ be exalted. May your people be encouraged. We pray in the strong and awesome name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
and forever I don't know what I could have done to deserve God's only son to fight my battles thank you until they're won team and, and appreciate all of our servants helping us today and leading us in worship. I'm, I'm ready to preach here, so I just need a little quick drink, if that's all right. <laughs> it's so good to have um, uh, my sister-in-law with us today, Ann, from Ohio. Ann and I share the same birthday. She's much, much older than I am, but uh, no, she's not. Uh, we love Ann, and we're glad that she's with us today. Good to see all of you. I've been watching you today. You look good. You really do. By the way, happy birthday, church. You look good for being over 2,000 years young. And... Um, there's a lot of people who are old, but uh, I don't think anybody here can say they're over 2,000 years old, but I think we can look at you today, and when we think about God's church and celebrate this birthday of the church on the day of Pentecost, we can say that you are looking good and you're looking young, because the Lord promised, and we believe, his words when he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. So I just want you to know today with all that's going on in the world and there are the naysayers and there are the doubters and there are those who want to focus on all the negative things. The church of Jesus Christ is alive today because he is risen and he is Lord. And so Guess what? I've read the back of the book, the last page, and we win. Amen. We win, and he has the final amen. So today, I want to, uh, since it's a birthday, I want us to have some spiritual cake and ice cream. And so we're going to turn to where it all began on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. And we're continuing our, our, uh, our emphasis on we. Not me. I'm glad it's not about me. And it's not me first, but we. We are his church. We are his people. And together, and we've been celebrating that throughout these days. And uh, we celebrated we when we had all of these graduates come up. It's we, right? Yeah. Yes, we celebrate their accomplishments, but we are in this together and we need each other and what a beautiful, beautiful thing. Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. 
And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Why are not all of these who speaking Galileans? And how is it that each one hear them in our own language to which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya around Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them in our own tongues speaking the mighty deeds of God. And they all continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others were mocking and saying, They are full of sweet wine. But Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, God says, that I will pour, out, pour forth my spirit upon all mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy... And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will grant wonders in the sky above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and glorious day that the Lord shall come. And it shall be that every one who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have in the notes today this quote from John Wesley, and I want to read it, and I want you to have it. It's, it's a great uh, theological um, piece that we can grab hold on to and learn from this day. I believe in the infinite and eternal Spirit of God, equal with the Father and of the Son, to be not only perfectly holy in Himself, but the immediate cause of all holiness in us, enlightening our understandings, rectifying our wills and affections, renewing our natures, unifying our persons to Christ, Assuring us of the adoptions as sons and daughters, leading us in our actions, purifying and sanctifying our souls and bodies to a full and eternal enjoyment of God. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Those are some powerful, powerful words that took place on the day of Pentecost and continued with God's church and it continues through you and me to this very day. The great work of the Holy Spirit. And so today our message is entitled, We Have the Power. Notice I did not say we have a power. There's a lot of a powers out there. People and places that they think they're in control and they have the power. But they do not have the power. But we as the people of God have the power of the Holy Spirit. Now... Before we work through this outline, let me just say this. That this was a, an event that happened in history on the day of Pentecost. It is written in God's Word. 
It is not an event that can be repeated in the same way over and over again. There will never be another day like this day as far as the event of Pentecost. It stands in history. It stands in Holy Scripture by itself as the beginning of the great movement of the Holy Spirit and the birth of God's church. The event cannot be repeated, but the experience of what happened on the day of Pentecost can be repeated over and over, and it has over and over now for over 2,000 years. So my prayer today as we think about this celebration day is that we can experience in our hearts, we can experience as the body of Christ, the great work and power of the Holy Spirit today. Do you believe that? I believe that with all my heart. If I did not believe that, I would just say amen and close the book and go home and just try to do my best. But we have the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes, I can go back and look at different events of my life and say, thanks be to God. And we do that from time to time. We look back and I hear often people say, the good old days, or they go back to a certain time and place, and we, oh, how our hearts long for those days to return. Well, those events are in history. They're beyond. We cannot go back and repeat those things, but the experience of those things can be repeated over and over again because the Holy Spirit is alive today. He said he would be with us always to the very end of the age. So he's with us today. So let me give you um, five things this morning that we have the power of. When we think of the power of God and the power of the Spirit, number one, we have the power of all and one. All and one. If you look at Acts chapter 2, really if you look at uh, the entire book of Acts, and go through that and underline the words all or one. It'll be repeated over and over again. It was, and I like to think of all in one as, if I could say it this way, as synonyms of the word we. We and all in one are the same descriptive words of God's church living in the power of the Spirit. So just notice in the first four verses how many times it's repeated. They were all together in verse 1. They were all in one place. Verse 1. It, the Spirit filled the whole house on each of them. Verse 3. All were filled. Verse 4. And you go down and you see that it was they were all in. All the believers that gathered in the upper room and prayed 10 days for God's Holy Spirit, and they, they listened to the voice of the Spirit. They were obedient to the voice of the Spirit. And the Scripture says they were all one. They were all together. And the beauty and the power of the unity of the body of Christ, I am so glad they were obedient. And may we heed the call to be obedient today. We're all in. It's all, we are all, we are one in Him. And whenever we get our focus on ourselves or on our circumstances or on what's going on in the world today, we're going to miss out on the blessings of the all and the one. And so, yes, what happens, the work of the Spirit in your heart and mind is a very personal thing. It's very personal. I can take you back to, to the events of my life and... If I wanted to go back and repeat a whole time period in my life, I would go back to the year 1980. That was the year that I was saved and sanctified and called to preach within just a few months of each other. And God was working in His church and using, using those, those spiritual fathers and mothers. I can't get away from how they poured themselves in me in that great church. And there was... In that church in Hendersonville, North Carolina, that whole year would be a year of revival. Every Sunday was revival. Every Sunday there was an outpour of the Spirit. Every Sunday the altars were lined with people seeking God for salvation and, and listening to the voice of the Spirit. And many were sanctified, holy, and called to ministry. And I was one of those. 
And I'll never forget that year, 1980. It's always ingrained. And I look around and I think about those times that I say to myself, oh, I wish I could repeat those things. Well, the events of those days are in the past. They're a part of my history. And I'm forever grateful for that. And I go back with a sense of nostalgia and I get a smile on my face thinking about how God worked in those days. But now here I am today in 2021. And you know what my prayer is? Lord, may the spirit of those days in which I got my start in my journey of faith with you, may those experiences come alive in me. And as I think about us today, we think about the experiences that we've had. And God came and God helped and God blessed and he did his great work. May we pray together as all in one that the Spirit of God would work in powerful ways today like He's never done before. And I believe that God does a great work. It's a brand new thing. It's not just a recycling of the old and rehashing of what has been in the past. But God does something new. And it's all, all in one together in the body of Christ. May the Lord help us. But I want you to know here... That this event of Pentecost, and we see the power of we here, and, and, and they were all in one accord in one place. And notice the Spirit of God came upon all of them. Not some of them. Not one individual or two individuals or just a handful of people. The Bible says the Spirit of God came upon all of them. And that's the beginnings of the powerful work of the Spirit. Yes, the Spirit manifests itself in us as individuals and, and those who received Christ as Savior. And there were 3,000 saved on that day of Pentecost, by the way. Yes, they all received the gift of the Spirit of salvation and, and God did His work in individual hearts. But we can't take anything away from the fact that the Spirit fell on all of them. And that's the powerful work of the Spirit of God. Yes, we can talk about individual personal experience, but let's make note here how powerful this work began with the Holy Spirit coming upon all of them, and they were in one place, one place, and God came and did his powerful work. Praise be to his holy name. The power of all in one. Number two, the power of fulfilled and filled full. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, the scripture says here, and the promise was to the disciples. Actually, you can go back to Jesus' own words. He talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to leave this world, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send another comforter, a counselor, a helper, an advocate. He will be with you. He will be in you. And so the promise is, and Jesus gave this before he left this world, he said, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Ju Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, even to the remotest part of the earth. And so now we see after the 10-day prayer meeting, those disciples praying, and they were obedient. They were in one accord. They were in one place. They were all together there. And I, I can't get my mind wrapped around the power and the beauty of that. Oh, if we could just come together like they did and let God be, do his work in us like he did then. I believe the great and powerful things can take place. But what was fulfilled that day? The very words of Jesus. He promised he would come and praise God he came. He came in all his power on that day of Pentecost. And what about filled full? They were filled full with the Holy Spirit. That means that they had to be emptied of the, the selfishness and the sin. God cannot come in and fill a vessel that is dirty and unclean. They were cleansed. They were purified. And the, and the promise is, is it was the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire that Jesus promised and that John pointed people to. I come to baptize you with water, but there's one who's coming after me. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so they were filled full of the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you, that was the event. That was the beginning moment. That was the place in time. But you read on in the book of Acts, whenever they went from place to place and house to house, 
wherever they were at. And the scripture says they prayed and they were filled again with the spirit. There was many infillings along the way. I'm glad for that because in my journey of faith, yes, I can take you back when I was filled with the Holy Spirit. But along the way, I'm glad in this journey, there's been time after time after time where there has been infillings where he filled me full again afresh with his spirit. And my prayer is that you and I would be filled full with the spirit of God today. Amen? Amen. Would you allow him to fill you full today? That's what we so desperately need and our hearts long for. And in fact, when Paul was writing to the Ephesians, he talked about a number of things that those believers should be doing. And he said, be filled with the Spirit. It's in the present tense. Keep on being filled with the Spirit. If we turn our cups upright, if we're in the Word, if we're obedient, if we're waiting on Him, the promise will be fulfilled over and over again. He will fill His people with His truth. Well, praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for that promise today. And so we turn now. We have the power number three. The power of hearing and speaking. Notice on the day of Pentecost, and this is the great miracle of the languages that day, that they all heard the gospel in their own language. This was not an unknown tongue that nobody could figure out. Everybody heard the gospel in their own language. The great miracle, when the Spirit came upon them, they spoke spoke because they had heard and the people had heard the very words of the gospel and they were able to understand the power of this is is that they all heard you got to hear first faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god they all heard they all understood the gospel in their own language and all the people that were gathered there for the pentecost feast all the nations uh, uh, Luke says in these verses that every nation under heaven was there. We do know as we counted there were at least 15 nationalities there. And so the miracle of God that day when he filled them, he filled them and they were given the ability to speak the very word of God and the people heard the gospel. Well, praise the Lord. Well, you know what happened there? The spirit came down and filled if you go back to the Old Testament, you remember the story when they decided they wanted to know God, so they built this tower called Babel, and they were going to reach up to the heavens, and they started building. I don't know how high they got. I would have loved to have just had a picture of that. And, um, and so what happened? God says, we're going to come down because they want to come up and make themselves God. So... The, the Bible says they went down and they confused them. And now we have all the languages that we have in the world today. And um, the confusion of that. Notice they were trying to go up and achieve this themselves. And God had to come down and confuse them to remind them that he is Lord. He is in control. But notice now the great reversal. We can call this the great reversal of Babel, Babel is that. God, they tried to come up, but instead now God comes down by his spirit. And what was confusion of all the languages of the world on this day, everybody heard, everybody understood, everybody was able to understand to the point of believing in the power of the gospel and what God had said. It's a miracle of the language. And, it's, and uh, here it's uh, the proclamation of the gospel in every language. Now notice... The spokesperson, the preacher of that day was Peter. Now, Peter, uh, someone said, and rightly so, Pentecost was the day that Peter the wimp became Peter the rock. And the big difference is, is the power of the Holy Spirit upon him. He was filled as with everyone else, and God had chosen him. God had designated him to be the preacher of that day. He even gave him the text to preach from, the book of Joel, chapter 2. So he was not only filled with the Spirit, he was a Bible preacher. He didn't preach man's words. 
He didn't come up with some clever sayings to say this is what happened. And he didn't try to make sense of it from a psychological or a philosophical point of view or any other view. He just said this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. God is fulfilling his scripture, his promise as he fills these people today. And he went on and proclaimed a gospel message from beginning to end, he included the cross and the resurrection and everything a good Bible preacher would preach. And 3,000 people came to know Jesus that day. And the miracle is, is that they all heard, they all understood. And because they heard and understood, they were able to hear and receive and know the gospel. And it changed their hearts forever. But Peter was changed. All the disciples were changed. Those who had spent 10 days praying, they were changed by the power of God. And let's be reminded again. And you can see it on, Pente in the, on the day of Pentecost. You can see it throughout the history of God's church. Every great movement of God began with a prayer meeting. They prayed first. And they prayed continually. And God answered that prayer by coming and fulfilling His promise to them. And people heard. The word was heard. The word was spoken in a powerful, powerful way. Well, number four, we have the power of wind and fire. Notice the description there. It came to them as a rushing, mighty, violent wind. I, uh, <clears throat> several years ago, I was at one of these science museums, and they had this, what they called, a hurricane tunnel. Have you ever been in one of those? You get inside and they crank it up and you could hear the wind and feel how powerful the force is of if you were in a hurricane. I don't think it was as strong as a real hurricane, but it got, it got your attention. And uh, I can remember hearing the, the sound of that and feeling the power of that as I was inside that, whatever they call it, and, and experiencing that. Well, the wind of the Spirit came in such a powerful way. They felt it. They experienced it. And wind in the scripture has two different meanings. Wind could mean judgment. And you can go back to Jesus' words where the separation of the chaff from the wheat and, and the, the, the pitchfork would go up and the wind would separate it. That the, that's a picture of God's judgment. And I believe God is separating the chaff and the wheat today. And we don't want to take anything away from the fact that God is a God of judgment. And there is a great, there is a great work going on right now. And God is separating the chaff from the wheat, no doubt about it. But wind also meant the very breath of God. The very breath of God. And breath equals life. We have the breath. You go back to Genesis and it says man was created from the dust of the earth and God breathed into man the breath of life and he became a living soul and so the breath of God and you go back to the, the resurrection appearances of Jesus and, and especially in John's gospel and the scripture says he breathed on them and they received the spirit the very breath of God and the breath of God causes life God brings life, and he brought life to his church. But he also, there is, the air, there is the message of judgment there because the people were given a choice, and some decided that they were going to reject that even that day. They said, these men, these are, they're all crazy. They're all drunk. They're filled with the sweet wine of the day, and they rejected the gospel. But there were those who were there that, what does this mean? They were astonished. There was something happened. God was breathing on them that day. And the breath of God brings conviction to the soul. The breath of God brings something to us that we cannot, we cannot put into our life by ourselves. We cannot breathe life into us. But God breathed life into them. And so the wind, the power of the wind that day was manifested. And the wind was the, the Holy Spirit blowing on his church breathing life into his church. No wonder they came alive. No wonder they went forth to the ends of the earth and spoke the word of God with boldness. They had the power of the Holy Spirit in them, filling them to completeness, and they were able to go and speak and, 
and be bold. And yes, they were up against all kinds of obstacles. And there were those who were trying to, they persecuted them and tried to do away with them. But they were able to go forth because they had the breath of God in them. And then the fire. Fire also deals with judgment. God is the same passage of Jesus separating the chaff from the wheat. He said eventually there's going to be a great pile of that chaff and it's going to be burned up in a fire. And the fire of God is the fire of judgment. And God's judgment will come. It has come and it will come. And God will burn up the chaff. And he'll keep the wheat forever and ever. But fire also means cleansing. And purifying and the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit purifying their hearts. And later on, we have the, the, the original Pentecost, but you also have the Gentile Pentecost later on in the book, book of Acts. And the testimony that day, the response that day is that God put no difference between us and them. He purified their hearts by faith. And the picture is, is that the fire came upon them. The tongues of fire rested upon each one of them. And that's the fire of God lighting them up and reminding them that their hearts needed to be cleansed. They needed to be purified. They needed to be in the power of God's spirit. And God worked in powerful, powerful ways. I, um, I can't get away from it. I've been, uh, I, don't, I try to sing to myself sometimes. But Bessie Porterhead's great, it's a hymn now, but it was a poem. O oh, breath of life, O oh, breath of life, come sweeping through us. Revive thy church with life and power. O oh, breath of life, come cleanse, renew us, and fit thy church to meet this hour. O oh, wind of God, come bend us, break us, till humbly we confess our need. Then in thy tenderness remake us. Revive, restore, for this we plead. Oh, I've been praying this for you and me. Oh, breath of love, come breathe within us. Renewing thought and will and heart, come love of Christ. Afresh to win us, revive thy church in every part. Oh, heart of Christ, once broken for us, tis there we find our strength and rest. Our broken, contrite hearts now solace, and let thy waiting church be blessed. Revive us, Lord, is zeal abating while the harvest fields are vast and white. Revive us, Lord, the world is waiting. Equip thy church to spread the light. May the wind of the Holy Spirit, may the fire of the Holy Spirit, unite our hearts today and fill us afresh, fulfilling the very words of Jesus and the power of the gospel. May it be proclaimed. They had to deal with rejection, and so do we. Now let me just give you something I think you need to know today. And I want to encourage you in this, but I also want to warn you in this. The world's going to get worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And there is an all-out attack today on Christians and Christianity. And instead of complaining and whining and saying, Oh, what's this world coming to? Why don't we be like that church and not focus on what the world is doing? That's what they're, that's what they're expected to do. Right. That's what they're supposed to do. But in say, instead of saying, oh, what this world is coming to, and I've heard it and I've said it myself too many times lately, and I've gotta, I'm telling myself, stop it. Stop it right now. Yes, that's what the world is supposed to do. But instead of saying, oh, what's this world coming to, why don't we start saying, Look who's coming to this world. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. The Holy Ghost from heaven. The promise of the Father that was given to you and me. He has come. And yes, we need to be ready. We need to be in the Word. We need to be people of prayer so that we can be ready with the all-out assault that the enemy is going to put upon us. But we have the whole armor of God. We have everything that we need to win the victory. And God's promised us victory. And may we live in victory instead of looking at the world and getting discouraged and defeated. That's the way the world is supposed to be. But we, in the world when it's at its worst, may the church be at its best. And realize we're going to experience rejection. Jesus said, you will be hated by all men for my name's sake. And so he talked about, he who endures to the end will be saved. I want to 
I want to make it to the end. I want to finish strong. I want to finish well. I don't want to limp my way in and barely make it and, and say, oh, I don't know what this world's coming to. I don't know if I'm going to make it. No, I want to live in the power of the Spirit's wind and fire to see that. You realize, and Paul said it best, there in the world, we're either two things to the world. Think about this. We are the smell of death or we're the fragrance of life. And there is the two choices. And the two choices were at stake here. There were those who said these men are drunk. They've had too much wine. And yes, there was the hatred. There was the mocking. There was the ridicule that happened. And it continued on. And it's continued on for 2,000 years. And to them, we smell like death. But to those who are believing, to those who say, what does this mean? And they realized and they heard the preacher preach that day. This is a fulfillment of the prophecy of God that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And it became the fragrance of life. And my heart is, is that more and more people will experience the fragrance of life. Yes, there will always be those who, that we, they look at us and they have the, we have the smell of death. But may the fragrance of life come upon us as we are the wind and fire of God. Well, i got to get the last one in here. It's only five minutes to twelve. <laughs> Number five, we have the power of people and places. We have the power of people and places. I want to slow down, take a breath here, drink a little bit of water. We are the people of God. We are God's people. Let's celebrate that a little bit this morning. Because as you look at this, the Spirit of God came upon people. And, these, and there were different kinds of people. And just look around today in our world. There's all kinds of different kinds of people. Everybody's different. I used to think I was, I used to think everybody else was weird. Now I realize I'm weird. I am unique. I am me. I'm glad for the day when I quit trying to be somebody else and just said, Lord, you use me. Use me. I surrender it all to you. And that's what happened. There were people in this story, and you think about the book of Acts, there were some characters. And when I say characters, I'm putting the emphasis on characters. They were some, there were some different people, and they were different. And yes, there was even some disagreements along the way. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to have different thoughts and ideas about anything and everything. And if you don't think that's the case, just listen to the world talk today. Everybody's got an opinion on everything. And they'll be glad to tell you what their opinion is. But people, people who are... God, God has breathed his life into are alive. And these people were alive by the Spirit of God. And notice what happened. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, all people. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will have visions, and your old men will dream dreams. And it talks about the servants of the Lord, those who are serving God. Everybody was filled. Every person mattered. Every person has a name. Every name has a story. Every story matters to God. And that was taking place here. They were themselves, but God filled them and transformed them to his honor and glory. And they were the people of God. And he had placed them. The place where he had them was right then and there on in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. But there became more and more places everywhere they went. The scripture says in the book of Acts, they went from house to house. They were daily in the temple worshiping the Lord. They were out in the highways and byways of the world and, and uh, by the rivers and in the communities. And they went from place to place beginning in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. And now the place is here, and the people are you and me. We are the people of God. And this place, Avon Park, is where God is continuing to do His great work in the power 
of his spirit. And so I'm, I've been praying over the people in my life, you. And I know that we're praying and trusting the Lord to help us to reach our community and our world for Jesus. And we got a, we got a great team in place and we've got great leaders helping us. And thanks be to God, God works all those things out and I stand amazed at how God puts people. But I believe every last one of you here today has a calling from God. You have gifts that the Spirit has manifested on you and you need to use them for your honor and glory. And so may this place be filled with people who are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And God will work in us and through us by His power and do things we never thought we could ever do. But we're, we cannot let the enemy discourage and defeat us and say it's just too hard or the world's gone so bad and on and on again. This, oh, where's all the young people? On and on. There's all kinds of reasons that people can give and they'll give them. But if we'll focus in and zero on that we are the called people of God, chosen by God, and this is the place he has for us. And what a place it can be where the experience of Pentecost can take place all over again. I'm praying that in these days as we think about community. And we got our Super Summer Saturday coming up. Isn't that just a cool name? Thanks to Karen Use for helping us figure that one out. Super Summer Saturday. It just sounds cool, I know, but there you go. And um, that's going to be the place out here in the outside on our property and we're going to work and plan for this and prepare for this but we need everybody here i need people that are going to be here just to pray and we're going to have a, a set area where we're going to call it the prayer area and we're going to ask people as they come in we're going to say how can we pray for you and we're going to have them write down their prayer request and we're going to pray for them right now can i pray for you right now because i want people to know out there in the community in which we live that they can come here if they have a need or their heart's broken or there's something overwhelming in life they can come here and somebody will pray for them and love them but we also we need all hands on deck so i want everybody here i don't want anybody staying at home on that day i want you here praying bring your lawn chair sit outside we'll open the doors if it gets too hot and you can come in and cool off but i want everybody here praying and of course we need workers we need people to help with the games and the food and all of that and i need some help from some guys i i'm putting this out today the bible story is on the the, the encounter with Paul in Acts 27 where they were in the sea of life and everything looked bad and so I need some guys to help me build a ship. Anybody going to help me? I need a ship. It needs to be big enough to hold several guys because there was, I think there were at least 22 on the ship in Acts chapter 27. It doesn't have to be that bad, that big, but I want, I want that story to come alive as we teach the children that whatever happens in this life there's storms in life there's problems i want families to know that yes there may be brokenness there may be hurts or pain but as paul promised those those people on that ship today not one of you are going to perish and none of them did and may the power of god use super summer saturdays where people and places come together in the power of the holy spirit Amen, and amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing as our response to God and His Word, the great chorus, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I want to open the altar today for anybody that would love to come and say, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, afresh and anew. Maybe for the first time, you need to let the Lord come in His sanctifying power and sanctify you wholly to the will of God. Maybe you need the Spirit of God to come upon you for the first time and you need to be born again of the Spirit of God. Or maybe you're here today and you think, I don't know what I have to offer. I'm discouraged. I'm defeated. But I want to be useful even in my older years. Remember, 
Young men shall see visions. Old men shall dream dreams. I'll let you decide if you're a visionary or a dreamer. But may the dreamers and the visionaries come alive today and be filled with the Spirit. I believe God wants to use every one of us. So may the Spirit of the Lord come in this place. If you're able to stand, please stand as we sing this as our response to God and His Word. Amen. Amen. today would you fill this pastor afresh with the Holy Spirit I cannot do this in my own strength and power trust me I've tried and I failed miserably trying to do the work of God on what I thought or what I what I wanted but I just want to be the example for all of us today following Jesus and saying, Lord, I need you to fill me afresh with the Spirit of God. I believe that there are hungry hearts here today. And as we sing this through just one more time, anybody like to join me in closing prayer here, praying that the Spirit of God would fill us afresh. You can remain seated or standing there and, and pray as well, but I, I believe there's some people here today that just say, I just need a fresh anointing of the Spirit of God on my life. Oh God, help us. Help us, Lord, to be filled with your Spirit, afresh and anew. Would you breathe your life-giving Spirit into your people today? May we be the people of God. And may you come into this place in a power so that we can be used of you reach our world, our community of Avon Park for Jesus and for His glory. Amen. 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 Amen.